Jamie from Inky and Scrappy sharing with you today a fantastic candied apple card featuring some old and new lawn fawn for a fabulous five YouTube hop and giveaway. More on that in a little bit. I will share my color guide on my blog if you are interested in the colors that I use today. So using some old stamps, I brought in that old candy apple and then I brought in the fantastic friends stamp set, the new absolutely awesome stamp set, the older but not too old crafty friends stamp set, and then the fantastic friends add on as well. So I'm just going to start picking out my color palette and my papers here. I like to take my swatch card because I've already colored all of my images and I haven't gotten that far on my card. Sometimes I do it the opposite way. I do my card base and then color my images. Well this time I decided to color all of my images and then build my card from there. So I had the idea of what I wanted to do in my head and it was just a matter of getting it all onto paper. I liked the look of the other cardstock that had the wood grain flooring, I guess you could say, where it doesn't all line up straight. And so I'm just creating my own with that warmer brown tone. I wanted it to have that more of a caramel, is it like a caramel colored brown? I thought it went better with my color palette, a little bit richer and deeper in color. And I am taking out some five and a half by seven dies to cut that panel out and then I also cut a panel out of some super smooth Nina Classic Crest 80 pound cardstock. Sorry I forgot. So as I do some ink blending here I'm going to share more about the giveaway and the hop. So each of us participating in the hop will be sharing creative ideas using old and new lawn fawn products. We hope that you find inspiration with each video as you hop along with us. Entering this giveaway is super simple. Up for grabs is a $25 gift card generously provided by lawn fawn. So all you need to do is comment on each video you watch each separate com or each comment on a video will get you a chance to enter so if you visit all five stops on the hop you will be entered five times into the draw drawing we will close comments for each of these on October 9th so anything after October 9th at 11:59 p.m. won't be included in the hop giveaway and then a winner will be announced on October 12th, 2022. So you have one week to claim and you have one week to claim your prize. Otherwise we will have to pick a different winner. So if you got here from World of Papercraft, Steph started us off and I am the second in the hop as Inky and Scrappy. And then from here you will go on to Jessica Squirrel and then Jordy's Cards and last Kate's Craft. If you get lost anywhere along the way, I will have all the links below so you can go from there. Of course, there's always a disclaimer in YouTube videos. So the disclaimer is the giveaway is sponsored by Lawn Fine and it's not sponsored by YouTube and YouTube has no bearing on the giveaway whatsoever. And now back to that creative process that we all love so much, right? So I started with some ink blending on that cardstock using a brick stencil. And then just make sure when you are doing a stencil that isn't big enough for your card back or your base piece there, because this one is five by seven. And so I needed to extend it a little bit. The trick to making it look like it is a seamless blend is to not get too close to that one edge so you can line the other one up and kind of blend it back in from the other side, if that makes sense. You saw it in the video, so hopefully that explains it enough. So the idea for this one was I wanted to bring in that pull tab feature because I like me a good interactive card. We all know this if you've watched anything from here before. And so I brought back in the older set, the die set for Let's Toast. So that pull tab feature from Let's Toast pairs beautifully with, you know, any pull tab sort of feature. This one is probably my favorite pull tab to work with. I do have a couple of other different brands that have pull tab features, but this one is definitely, to me, the most easy to work with 
when it comes to ease of use, I guess you could say. And less, shall we say, disruption on the front of the card per that little slit that is in the front. So it makes it fairly easy to blend it into your card. And this one is totally hidden except for that little arrow on the top for the most part that shows where to pull the tab from. So I wanted this one to be to have that surprise feature where the bat is pulling that larger caramel slash candied apple out. And is it really candied because they're vampire bats? So it's blood red. I don't know what them bats have been concocting in their little cauldron of red gooey bubbles. We're going with candy apples though because this is a kid's show. <clears throat> I did bring in some of that Distress Candied Apple spray stain and then some mica from Brutus Monroe, just one of their frosted mica water H2Os or their watercolors. I like to add those to any of my things that I want that mica fleck and speckle on, but I don't have a color that matches to what I'm using in a mica spray stain, if that makes sense. So I will finish, I'm gonna just adjust my coloring or cutting out here a little bit. I don't actually end up using that little bubble that I cut out separately, but I thought it was an option, so I did cut it and save it and put it off to the side. So to I cut all of my images with the Brother Scan and Cut for this one, and so I did alter that caramel apple from the set by just adding some drippies to the bottom of it. I wanted it to look like it was being pulled from the fresh vat of candy coating, and so to get that look, I really just kind of hand drew some drops down from it, nothing too fancy, and then after I was done, I went around it with a black fine liner pen. And if I'd have thought ahead of time, I probably would have stamped, masked off the bottom of the candied apple. But you really don't see a whole lot of that black line anyways, because it kind of gets covered with the drips that are coming off. So I wasn't overly concerned with that black line being there. I do go in with the color that I colored the table for some of those white pieces on the edges of my apples to make them blend in a little bit better to the table without having to cut every little piece off and around there. So in my head I had this one planned out from like the get-go. So I actually ended up just buying the candy, the caramel apple because when I saw the bats and I thought of the cauldron, this is what I thought of was, well, even that absolutely awesome set. I was like, oh, there's the little candy apples or the caramel apples in there. And that big one would go so good with some of the other cards. I absolutely love the fact that Lawn Fawn works so seamlessly with each other in sets. Like, there's just so many options and things that you can do with them. So, this was, you know, one of those ideas. So I need to hide my candied apple behind something because my pot isn't really big enough to hide the whole of the candy apple. So I'm going to end up popping up my flooring piece here instead of just popping up my cauldron. I figured this way I didn't have to worry about any of the apple sticking out of the cauldron to make this work. And so I could stick it behind the flooring and nobody would know that it's back there. So it kind of gives that complete surprise of the apple getting pulled out from the cauldron. I'm going to just take my bone folder here and make sure that that is folded well or opened well. The crease lines are in there good. And then I will cut and assemble the little bracket piece, the, the, stable, the stabilizer for my pull tab. I am having a hard time with words today. <laughs> I'm sorry. 
So I made sure that my pull tab kind of matches my background. So adding that brick to it and then doing some ink blending with that black soot just to make sure it all blends together well. And making that outside of the card kind of darker and that center the brightest, that's where your eye is going to be focused the most. And so it just kind of pulls everything, pulls the eye into the middle of my card. And so for this one, I'm going to, I just kind of sketched where my apple is going to sit. And granted, this is on the back side or the upside down side. So this way I knew that where the little squiggle is with the pencil, I don't want any adhesive to get close to that. I'm using some super thick foam tape that I actually picked up from Amazon. And then I will put that on and then you can see that the apple is still going far enough down there and it's coming up just fine. It is not hindered at all. So I just like to make sure that I do that beforehand. I also picked up some full adhesive backed foam sheets. So these are, I think like a half a sheet of paper size wise. And so I cut that down to what I needed for the back of my panel. I want my panel to have a lot of stability to it. And so to make sure that it has that room for that pull tab to work, and these are fairly thin foam sheets, to make sure that pull tab has plenty of working room, I just used that foam sheet on the back and cut around where the pull tab needed to be. And then I could build my card front from there. So I don't have to worry about flipping it over later and adding all of the pieces. And I did go back and add, so my red splatter. It was not dry when I started. I knew it was not dry when I started. So I was just very careful as to make sure that my fingers were not covered in red sparkly splatter while I was adding all of the things. So I'm going to add in my apples over there and then of course we need a little spooky spider in a spooky little scene, right? And then to pop him up, because my base or my flooring is popped up, I felt that I needed to pop up that really thin cobweb strip there. The spider itself is actually adhered onto the floor, so it's not popped up at all. And then I'm just going to continue to add in some more foam for my front figures, and then any figure that is in the background that I want popped up further. I did pop up the bat with the little potion bottle with that full thickness foam. So it is the same height as my flooring. And then adding in the one bat with the book popped up and then the little spider with the other potion and spells book directly to the floor so it looks like it's further back on the floor. And then, of course, popping up that little bat with the little stirring spoon there. And then we will add that. I might over foam my pieces. I don't know. I use a lot of foam when I do scene cards. And then adding in some more elements just to kind of fill in the scene. Adding in my potion bottles. And then before I add this onto my card front, I need to figure out my sentiment. Yes, I did not figure out a sentiment before. I did leave room on the bottom there purposely for a sentiment. And I thought about stamping it directly on. And I thought better of it. Because, you know, being I have all those layers of foam adhesive and thickness, Excuse me, I was really worried about mucking it up. And so I just went for the straight sentiment on a piece of scrap cardstock. And then I will cut that out from a banner once I have this all lined up. So I did end up cutting my stamps apart for this one because I wanted it to say have a an absolutely fantastic day. So I did end up cutting the absolutely apart from the rest of that sentiment and of course that fantastic 
day as well. And then just butting them all up next to each other and getting the sentiment that I want. And then to decide if I wanted to bring in some red or if I wanted to pull in some more of that green. I really was kind of going back and forth. I thought about the red just because of the caramel apple or the candied apple, but I kind of thought I liked the red as a pop of color. And to not overdo it, I went with the green in the end. And then, of course, because if we're going to have this candied cauldron of bubbly goodness, you know it's going to make a mess, right? So I had to splatter the rest of the things that were close to the cauldron. And so I just sneakily covered up the rest of my card there. So I didn't get any more on the other things that I didn't want extra splatter on. So I just went in with my three markers that I had used for my greens in this scene. And then I added those in. And then I decided I needed to fill in that one space with the little bat. So the little bat that's taken a little rest, he's the one that's been sticking the apples with the sticks and, you know, trading trading off with the one that's lifting them out of the cauldron. That's It's hard work lifting out, out them candied apples from the cauldron. And then I go over all of my bottles with some glaze, you know, because... We have to add all of the glitzy glaze. And I debated doing the cauldron with glaze. But being that my moving parts are going there, and I did do my candied apples on the table. I seriously thought about doing my candied apple that is coming out of the cauldron. But I decided it probably wasn't very safe. So instead, I just did some glitter pen over the top of that and then added those glossy black eyes to all of my bats. And that is my completed card for today. Remember to leave a comment below to be entered for a chance to win that $25 Lawn Fawn gift certificate. And make sure you stop by the rest of the stops on the hop so you can also get some extra entries in there and hopefully you find a few new subscriptions to add to your subscription feed because these ladies are some amazing crafters and lots of inspiration and just wonderful human beings. Keep getting inky, Jamie over and out.